Blood glucose levels must remain relatively constant inside of the body. If they don't, there's all sorts of nasty little side effects that might be felt. If you think about this in the context of osmosis, obviously if we change the solute concentration, for example a solute like glucose, then this means we're also changing the water potential, which means we can get water moving in the wrong direction. Obviously this could be a disaster for your body's tissues. And to top it all off, if blood glucose level gets out of control, then there is a risk of death associated with this. So let's think about some of the natural variation that might happen inside of your body. Imagine you have a lovely meal, some nice British fish and chips or something like that. Suddenly your blood glucose level is going to increase because you've added more of it into your body. Fortunately, your body is really good at keeping all of this under control. Let's look at this scenario. You start off with normal blood glucose and then it starts to rise because you've had a meal. What happens is the pancreas recognises this change in blood glucose level and it secretes a hormone called insulin. This hormone is received by the liver and it tells the liver to convert the glucose into glycogen. It's the insulin that's kind of causing the liver to do this. It's the insulin that's sending the message that it needs to convert glucose into glycogen and then the liver will store that glycogen. Because the glucose has been removed from the blood, it means that the blood glucose level will fall and it will return back to its normal level. As you start doing activities, your body's cells are going to carry out respiration and this means that your blood glucose level is going to fall below the normal level. Fortunately, your pancreas will also recognize this change and it will secrete another hormone known as glucagon. The liver will then break down the glycogen. What's happening is the glucagon is causing the liver to convert the glycogen back into glucose. It then releases it into the blood, which obviously means that the blood glucose level rises back to the normal level. All of this is one example of something called homeostasis, in which your body is making sure that its internal conditions, its internal environment remains constant. This is all very different with a person who suffers from diabetes. Diabetes is a condition in which the body doesn't control its glucose levels correctly, and there are two different types of it. Type 1 diabetes is one where the immune system attacks the pancreas cells that make the insulin. By contrast, type 2 diabetes is a one where the body doesn't respond correctly to the insulin that is produced. With type 1 diabetes, a person will take insulin injections, but with type 2, this is not initially required because insulin is still being produced by the pancreas. Type 1 diabetes is a lot less common and type 2 is far more common and type 1 is something that's usually diagnosed in childhood but type 2 diabetes is diagnosed usually in someone who's in an older adult. Now then we've said that injections are not initially required but they can be later in a person who suffers from type 2 diabetes. The pancreas secretes more insulin to compensate for the fact that the body's not using it correctly. Eventually, over time, we might find that the pancreas cells kind of burn out. And so the insulin injections become necessary because after a while, the pancreas isn't doing the job that it needs to. A person who suffers from diabetes might go through phases of having high blood sugar or low blood sugar. Low blood sugar is known as hypoglycemia. And this might result in symptoms like dizziness and tiredness. And this is because respiration is not happening at the rate that it should. If this goes too far, it might result in irrational behaviour, like you might find that the person is talking nonsense or seeing things that aren't there, and it could even result in unconsciousness if it goes too far. High blood sugar, on the other hand, is known as hyperglycemia, and this can result in blurred vision, dry mouth, the person might start feeling really thirsty, and there might be an increase in heart rate and breathing rate. Ultimately, either of these things are very bad for the body if they continue for a long time. Obviously, it's important for a diabetic person to make sure that they monitor their blood glucose levels to make sure they're not getting too high or too low. And there are two common ways that they can do that. And one of them is blood tests. There's basically a little portable device they can carry around where they take a little pinprick of blood and the device will tell them what their blood glucose level is. And another method is urine tests. They can use a small disposable dipstick and that measures to see if there is any glucose present in the urine.